Uh, my name is Kyle McMillan. I'm 21 years old. Uh, I weighed 233 this morning, and I'm 5'10". Okay, man. Um, so go ahead and tell us a little bit about what your plans are for this year. Uh, so we are 13 weeks out right now from the Flint qualifier. Uh, I think it's mid I, Flint Championships or something like that. I don't even know what it's called. Um, and then 12 days later is North Americans, so hopefully you get our qualification and then um, go and do North Americans. I'm competing in uh, light heavyweights. Um, last time I competed in light heavyweights, I was 17 years old. And um, the last time I competed, though, at 19 and 20, I was 225. So I could have been leaner at those shows obviously and I started working with a new coach Dom Kuza and he's the one that kind of picked the, the light heavy he thinks that's my best shot I'll look the best at and whatnot so that's what we're going with uh, so we started out with um, we did shoulders and tries we started out with uh, dumbbell shoulder presses um, work we did uh, four sets worked up on our third set to uh, a heavy set of 110s for 10, and then a back down set of about 12. Um, I've always been like, I like, I like the, the compound movements, like for shoulders, you know, shoulder presses, for chest, bench press, and stuff like that. Uh, the heavy lifting for me is just, I like doing it. Um, then we went into some uh, rear, like an incline, incline bench, uh, rear delt fly. Uh, we did three sets of 15 there. Um, on rear delt, I like to go a lot lighter and feel the squeeze and whatnot. Um, then we went into, went into uh, cable, cable front raises uh, with a handle. Um, again, on those, I did isolated. I like to feel a squeeze, really contract on those. So I did uh, three sets of like 12 to 15 on there. Um, then I went, went into uh, a, partial, a partial side lateral raise. Um, to be honest, it looks like you're trying to do half reps or cheating reps, but if you really think about the, the, the side delt and everything like that, it's more of a, it, it works the, the cusp right here on your shoulder. Um, plus I just saw my coach doing them, so I thought, they, thought that was good something to add in. And then we did a, a uh, drop set with those of uh, full full reps, um, like 12 to 15, the three sets on those, and then uh, dumbbell shrugs. Um, I don't like to go too heavy on those because I feel like, I don't know, you can hurt your neck or something like that. Um, and I just like to get a good squeeze on because it's a smaller muscle, so I like to get a good squeeze. And then uh, we did we went into triceps and. Uh, Right now, I'm just doing, I'm just, so, we did, we did shoulder and triceps, so I went in the triceps and then I did three, uh, three movements, just three sets of 12 to 15 on that. Um, we did all, I did all cable exercises. I feel for me, it just, I get a good contraction with uh, the cable. I'm able to keep tension on the muscle the whole time. Um, unlike with a, you know, with like a skull crusher or something like that, I can, I can get too heavy with those, I mean, and I just feel like you could injure yourself, your elbow or something like that, and you can overcompensate with, you know, your chest and your shoulders and stuff, you know. Um, and I don't really feel like a, like with a, a overhead dumbbell skull crusher, I don't really, I can do, you know, 110 pounds, but I don't feel a squeeze or anything really, so that's so why I stuck with all cables. Um, and to be honest, I don't really do, like a arm day, I just I throw biceps in with my chest workouts right now, and then I throw triceps in with my uh, delt workouts. So, what is your split, buddy? Are you like a push pull person? Uh, so I do right now. Um, I'm sure my coach would like me to follow. He follows like R R I R. It's like a new, it's kind of a newer way of working out. Uh, it's reps in reserve, and he does like a push pull type split. I don't follow that though. I do. Um, I do, so I do chest and, chest and buys, um, and then I do hamstrings and glutes, uh, then I do back usually, and then um, 
quads and then delts and tries and then repeat. So I just I split up my legs. I feel like I get more. Well, for the longest time, my hamstrings I, I, I felt like my hamstrings lacked, and um, for me, I've always wanted you know to have good hamstrings and good glutes. So I feel like I can really focus. I feel like if you just do a Unless it's planned and structured, you know, I, I'm not one of those guys, I don't have everything written down or logged or anything like that. So I guess unless you're like that, you know, you, you tend to, on a leg workout, tend to do more quad dominant movements. You know, you do squats and leg presses and, you know, leg extensions. You know, people kind of forget about the posterior chain. So that's why I split it up. And I think it's really helped develop my, my glutes and my hamstrings. And, and I feel like my quads, they don't dwarf my hamstring, but I feel like, I don't need to, to do as much maybe for them right now until I, I feel like I'm pretty proportionate in an aspect, so, so yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm 13 weeks out now. So I got up to, I was 260, um, and then we did, uh, when I, I, st I started working with uh, Dom Cusa in November <clears throat> and he kind of laid out the plan you know he's a very he's a very technical guy but he's got a lot of I call it like gym common sense like he knows he knows more than just the book and um, he he kind of laid out an off season I got up to 260 and then we did a cleanup phase at about 25 weeks out um, and that's where I dropped I dropped about 30 pounds during the cleanup phase and then we kind of cruised for a split between uh, low carb days and or moderate carb days and high carb days. Um, on my high carb days, I was getting up to about 700 grams of carbs, about 4,000 calories, um, and we kind of maintained the around 235. Um, and now, just last week, we started. We got into. I'm following a uh, three. Let's see, it's uh, four It's four low days, one high day, two moderate days. So we do that, and then uh, I haven't done any cardio yet. We just, we're adding, car actually, we start cardio on Monday, so. Um, I, since I started working with Dom, even though I, I don't let him control my training, I try to follow, I, I've stuck with the same movements for usually six to eight weeks at a time, and then I've switched it up basically. I mean, all off season I was doing like heavy, heavy back squats, like barbell back squats, and then I went into uh, hack squats, so I stayed away from the bar, and that, so like, you know, I'll do things like that, I'll change it up in that sense. Um, I actually, like today we did dumbbells on shoulder press, but for the last probably four weeks I've been doing uh, like military style shoulder press. So I change it up, things like that. So let's probably talk about uh, how you got into your bodybuilding and start off with, you said you had a football background, but powerlifting also going to detail on that. So I, yeah, I played football um, since I was seven years old and then I got into high school. Basically going into my ninth grade year, I started working out just to get bigger for um, just for football and then uh, our school had a powerlifting team and I I kind of noticed I was strong so I said screw it I'll do it and uh, so I did that my sophomore year my junior year and my senior year I actually won two state championships and I I broke three state records I think I, I deadlifted 625 at 16 my senior year so um, and then I after high school, I, I signed a letter of intent to go play college football at the University of Mount Union. Um, and I actually, I didn't, I didn't go and play football. I called the school up. I said, I'm not going to come down. It was like for fall camp. And I wanted to do my first bodybuilding show. So I did that at 17. And then I, after I did that, I was like, okay, now what? Because I realized that this wasn't a marathon and that I wasn't going to make any money or be any, you know, I don't know. It was like, it was like okay, now what do I do? Because I prepped for 12 weeks and that got me through like the fall. And then I got to winter, and I'm like, okay, now what do I do? So I called back to school, and I went down there for a month. It didn't work. I just didn't like it, and I came back, and I just kind of put all my eggs into bodybuilding. And uh, I think 
I just, I just, I did two more. Shows. I've done two more shows. This will be my fourth and my fifth show this year. So I've only done three shows. I've gotten. Yeah, I mean, I just, I think I was always a bigger kid, and I think I thought muscles looked cool, you know, and whatever. But then it just, it just got addicting, you know. I mean, I getting results in the gym and getting bigger and stuff like that, you know. And uh, I think at first it was a little egotistical, you know. You looked good. You wanted to look good, you know. You were talking to girls and stuff like that. But then it just turned into, you know, I just I came became obsessed with it, you know. And um, I started following the eating, the, the way you eat and everything like that. And I just got obsessed with it. Uh, I mean, probably the first, the first big one was like Jay Cutler. I feel like that's a lot of people, but I, he's got a few different videos and it shows the videos of him competing at T nationals at 19. And like, I don't know. I just, I just always related to that in my head. I thought that like I acted like that was me, you know, and I just wanted to live out that reality that, that he, that he got to live out that he probably didn't, well, he says that he didn't expect to live out, you know what I mean? So how he's, how he, he just. He hit it, and you know he made a big time, you know, in a few years, and I think that kind of that kind of drove me like it's possible, you know, because he was that small town guy, you know, he grew up on a farm, all that crap. I mean, I grew up in Ortonville, Michigan. It's a small town, you know. I think there's one famous person out of Ortonville, Michigan. It's Matt Lentz. If anybody knows who that is, he went to Brandon High School. He played for the University of Michigan. Played for the Pittsburgh Steelers. But I mean, I didn't. I I've never. I don't want to be, and I've never wanted to be just. Uh, a homie, a hometown person, you know, where where you went to school there, you grow up there, you work a nine to five, and pay your fucking bills. I don't want to be like, I don't want to be like that, to be honest. So, I just, uh, I'm not saying I want to live in the city or anything, but I mean, I want to, I just have wanted to work for myself and make money with my body, to be honest. So I, I realized I wouldn't be a pro football player. I wasn't quite tall enough for that, and uh, so I, that's that's another reason I got into bodybuilding and just ran with it. Uh, so right now, um, I'm a personal trainer and nutrition coach. I've been doing that for about three and a half years. Um, I work out, I train clients out of a few different gyms and then uh, I have some online clients, nutrition clients, you know, I write nutrition plans, training programs, things like that. And then I also work in home, um, with auto accident victims, people that have been in car accidents and after physical therapy. Um, they can receive, it's called physical medicine. Um, people you like to thank fans, friends, family, sponsors, anyone, their coach or um, I'd like to, I'd like to thank my girlfriend for putting up with me. Um, when she met me, she, I don't think she realized, she's, she doesn't work out, I mean, she works out, she's worked out and whatever, but she's not into bodybuilding or anything like that. And she, I don't think she realized what it entails, you know, and I think she's learned a lot over the past uh, two years. So I'd like to thank her for putting up with me and dealing with me. Um, I got a one-year-old son, you know, that she does, she, she does a lot with him because, you know, this is demanding. It's, you gotta eat every three hours and work out and all those things, you know, so she takes care of the kid and stuff like that. You know, I'm home and whatever, but she, she helps me out in that aspect. Um, I'd like to thank my, my parents, I guess. I think there's some genetics that play a role there, so. I'd like to thank them and uh, Dom, Cu Dom Cusa. I, I've only known him for a few months, but I just feel really, really close with him. And um, I think he's, I think he's gonna get me somewhere, you know, because a lot of people don't realize, you know, the guys that compete, it's sure it's our bodies, you know, and we're doing the, the stuff, but there's those coaches behind you that are telling you what to do. I mean, if I didn't, if I didn't work with him, you know, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't know what to do. I would know what to do, but I don't think to the depth in depth that the coach lays it all out for you.